Olivier Giroud, the most underrated football player ever? When Olivier Giroud became France's highest scoring male footballer by scoring his 52nd international goal to surpass Thierry Henry, he was overshadowed in the media by Kylian Mbappe's playful performance against Poland. Ironically, this seems to be the fitting tribute to the 36-year-old's magnificent accomplishment considering he has been overlooked his entire career. Despite being a classic center forward in a time when dynamic attacking midfielders and deceptive inside forwards are in vogue, Giroud has long been criticized for what he lacks, while his unique skills and contributions have been undervalued. Only in the last stages of his career, after repeatedly silencing his critics, is he finally receiving recognition and appreciation for his true abilities and accomplishments. Was his time in the Premier League that bad or was it overstated by the media? We'll be exploring in further detail throughout this video, so be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell to enjoy more in-depth analysis on your favorite players. Youth Days as the hunt for young talent widened, a budding Giroud drew the attention of League Two side tours following his brief but notable stint with Grenoble. In the 2009-2010 season, he rose from the bench to assume the lead striker position that was left vacant by Tenema Ndiaye. It took the promising youngster less than half an hour to demonstrate his skills, netting two goals on the opening day against Le Havre. From then on, Giroud became a crucial member of their attacking lineup, scoring 21 league goals to finish as the league's top scorer, subsequently earning him a move to Montpellier for £1.8 million. He continued to impress at Montpellier, winning another golden boot in his debut season and helping the club secure their first ever league title. Although he was tied with Paris Saint-Germain's Nene for most goals, he had scored more from open play. In addition to scoring goals, Giroud also provided nine assists for his teammates that season, demonstrating that he is more than just a target man. Despite Montpellier's reluctance to sell him, Giroud's departure was inevitable when Arsenal's Arsene Wenger showed interest in him. The transfer was finalized in June 2012 for a fee of approximately £9.6 million, which was considered a bargain given his exceptional attributes. Club Career Giroud had a great start to his Arsenal career, scoring 17 goals and providing 11 assists in his debut season. This was a relief to the Arsenal fans who were still recovering from the departure of Robin van Persie to Manchester United, whom he had just helped win a Premier League title. The French striker subsequently maintained his lead striking role for two years, but his position was challenged with the arrivals of Alexis Sanchez and Mesut Ozil. Despite being the club's top scorer in the 2015-16 season with 24 goals, Giroud's achievements were overshadowed by Ozil's brilliant playmaking skills, where he achieved 8 goals and 20 assists, he fell one short of the Premier League record that year. Plus, the German passed the eye test while Giroud's style was slightly more unconventional. Unfortunately, promising young players like Aaron Ramsey were also taking the limelight from the Frenchman. What the media won't tell you though, is that Giroud's arrival coincided with Arsenal ending their nine-year trophy drought as he played a key role in helping them lift the 2014 FA Cup, and then successfully defended it the following season against Aston Villa, scoring a goal in the process. He later won a third FA Cup with the Gunners in the 2016-17 season. During his six-year stint at the Emirates Stadium, he scored 105 goals and provided 41 assists in 253 games. Not a bad return in a team that stagnated during Wenger's latter years. Nevertheless, both fans and media unfairly criticized him, based on an unrealistic longing to return to Arsenal's previous playing style, ignoring the team's actual circumstances. In January 2018, Giroud decided to switch sides and join London rivals Chelsea in the hope of turning his fortunes around. At that time, the team was going through a period of managerial changes, with Maurizio Sarri taking over from Antonio Conte. Despite the upheaval, Giroud was determined to prove himself and earn a starting position. However, Sarri continued to favor the inconsistent Alvaro Morata. Undeterred, Giroud seized every opportunity to demonstrate his skills and stake his claim for a place in the starting lineup. That same year, he played a crucial role in helping Chelsea win their second Europa League title, scoring 11 goals in 14 games and clinching the Golden Boot Award. 
despite his impressive performance and contribution to the team, Giroud was once again overlooked for a starting position in the following season. This time, the arrival of a transfer embargo at Chelsea left them short of options for strikers. Despite being a clear candidate to fill the gap, Giroud was once again left out of the starting lineup by manager Frank Lampard in favor of academy graduate Tammy Abraham. While Giroud did manage to play in several games throughout the season, his lack of recognition persisted, making it another frustrating experience for the French forward. Still, the Frenchman left Stamford Bridge after winning another FA Cup and playing an instrumental role in securing a Europa League and a Champions League. His contribution to Chelsea's Champions League victory was noteworthy, as he scored six goals, including four against Sevilla. His outstanding performances helped guide the Blues to the final, where they clinched their second European title against Manchester City. It is only now at 35 years old that Olivier Giroud is respected. The striker managed to score 14 goals and assist four times in 38 league appearances during the season. He additionally scored two goals in the final game against Sassuolo, which secured the Serie A title for AC Milan. This was Giroud's 12th trophy, an impressive feat that may come as a surprise to some and underscores his underrated status. Although he may not be counted among the very top players, he has made significant contributions to the game over the past decade and deserves more recognition than he receives. France International Further evidence of this is Giroud's role in the French national team. For several years, the French striker found himself squeezed between the exceptional technical skills of Karim Benzema, the star power of Mbappe, and the finesse of Antoine Griezmann. Continuously compared to and considered as inferior to the present Ballon d'Or winner Benzema, and with no help from Benzema's go-karting slash Formula One comment, Giroud has now become the subject of mainstream discussions that question whether he is a better fit for the French system than the Real Madrid star. The timing is intriguing as the previous World Cup also saw a resurgence of the traditional number nine. Giroud's ability to score goals is undeniable, as evidenced by his breaking Thierry Henry's record in fewer games and boasting a better goal-per-game ratio than Benzema, Raymond Copa, and Zidane. He also has a knack for scoring spectacular goals. Think about the Puskas winning scorpion kick. However, what sets Giroud apart is his work rate, aerial dominance, and ability to hold up play with his back to the goal, which provides balance and a focal point to France's attack. He excels at occupying the center backs, which creates space for France's more dynamic attackers like Mbappe, Dembélé, or Griezmann to exploit. As a result, he is a crucial part of France's attacking system. His teammates who have experience playing alongside him and have an intimate understanding of France's setup have long acknowledged and valued his importance to the team, as evidenced Benjamin Pavard, who explained that. To play at the top level for as long as he has his exceptional respect. When no one believed in Olivier, he always stood up and proved them wrong. He is selfless and gives so much to the team. I hope he goes on and makes the record his own. As an example, during the 2018 World Cup in Russia, Giroud did not manage to get a shot on target, but he was instrumental in dropping back and pulling defenders with him to create space in the attacking third. In fact, when compared to other top strikers like Luis Suarez, Timo Werner, Robert Lewandowski, Romelu Lukaku, and Harry Kane, Giroud applied the most pressure outside of his attacking third per 90 and had the second most touches per 90 in the same area of the field. However, it would be unfair to only credit the 36-year-old for his physicality and hard work. He also possesses impressive technical ability, a quality that manager Didier Deschamps clearly sees. He's a striker who is so useful for the team even if he doesn't score himself, and there have been periods when he hasn't found the net. But even then, he helps others to score. To attest to his skill, one can easily observe the second goal France scored against Poland, where Giroud delicately controls a lofted ball with his initial touch before passing it to Ausmain Dembélé on the right flank. Another example of his finesse is his assist to Jack Wilshere for an iconic Arsenal goal in 2013, which could potentially be archived in a virtual museum. Despite his belief in resilience and patience, Giroud probably never expected to achieve the level of success he has today given his humble beginnings, 
playing for lower league teams such as Frogs Olympique Club, Grenoble, and Tours before signing with Montpellier at the age of 24. At 36, he is now a world champion, a two-time league winner in different leagues, and a Champions League winner. He is also the highest male goal scorer in the history of France's national team. In addition, he has won four FA Cup medals and a Europa League winner's medal, scoring 246 goals and providing 90 assists in 610 club appearances. In an alternate reality where Olivier Giroud was a go-kart, he would undoubtedly be an exceptional one. But in this world, as he himself has stated, he is a legendary figure in French football who has always had a strong ambition to overcome obstacles and prove that anything is achievable. With that being said, where does Giroud rank in your all-time strikers list? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell to enjoy more football-related videos.